Hello, I am Katarina. I will present some a part of my work uh, supervised by uh, Elin Chu and Oscar Monflu. Uh, it's work from here, from Center for Digital Music, Queen Mary. And the outline of the presentation is first I will describe a little bit the problem we want to face. Uh, then we the analysis of the dynamic changes and then the data expansion and then conclusions. Uh, but I want first to start with a, um, a quotation, a, a definition by uh, Palmer for musical expression that I like, which they, the performance, manipulate the sound properties including frequency, time, amplitude and tempo above and beyond the pitch and duration categories that are determined by composers. These manipulations define the term musical expression, which is achieved by altering the variables for stress, rhythm, accent, and intensity contour. Uh, we know that uh, nowadays the music score demands fidelity and accuracy when a musical piece is interpreted. Uh, although a musical piece and composer notes for its interpretation remains the same, musicians tend to describe the effects they wish to produce or wish the listeners to hear in a unique way. Uh, there are two main considerations concerning the score markings. Uh, the other reinforce a natural predisposition of a music part to be expressed in a particular way based on its structure, or it's just a composure indication of a non-obvious expressive change. Talking about uh, a classical music notation. Uh, our focus is to model the perception of dynamic contrast using piano recordings, and with, by saying dynamic contrast, we mean uh, changes in dynamic values. Um, we are inspired from Schenkerian analysis, uh, where in this study dynamics are described as operating on two hierarchical levels. So there are the primary dynamic shading, like the main dynamic level, and the inner shading associated with the foreground level. So the focus are dynamic markings, where you can find them into the score. And we follow this definition by the primary dynamic markings, which are markings that indicate at least one of the following factors, structural significance, indications that are employed to demarcate the start of a new passage or to introduce a new musical idea, and length, indications that are used to characterize a considerable number of bars in a particular section of the piece or in the entire piece. Uh, we want to uh, understand the connection between the prosodic parameters and intended dynamic markings in the score, how the changes in dynamic markings uh, can be mapped uh, into the score, and how uh, they can model the different interpretations of the same piano pieces, and analyze the context-dependent response to the score markings such as pianissimo, piano, forte, and also text indications like a dolce, poco, più. The motivation, our main goal is either a synthesis, like synthesize more natural sounding music in terms of dynamic changes when having as input the score, uh, and also a music uh, transcription from audio to score, build automated methods for a more accurately and meaningful mapping of musical expression in recording, musical. Uh, we first started to face the problem by using this uh, data by term project is a mazurka project uh, where they have many interpretations of piano pieces by Chopin as mazurka pieces and they provide also freely accessible uh, data uh, including these five uh, mazurka pieces a number of performances of the same pieces by different uh, famous performers uh, by having the score bit positions uh, aligned with the audio um, and taking the dynamic values for its bit position using the smooth version of the raw power calculated for the audio signal and they use DBSPL values for each bit position. Our contribution to that it was because we are aware that uh, the recording environments are different. Uh, we normalized uh, its data by subtracting the peak of its performance. Um, of course, there are some difficulties by saying aligning, aligning audio. Um, for example, if we go through this data, um, 
there are uh, some times that uh, the performers don't follow the notes as written in the score, for example here, we can hear this uh, chord in the end as arpeggio. Uh, other thing is, uh, okay, we found also this thing, that uh, the first uh, notes that are highlighted were playing in a lower octave. But it's the same note in the score. And the most difficult part for aligning uh, the big positions is the rubato style where the performers play in romantic period uh, in general. Rubato means that they don't play in the same time the right and the left hand. For, for here, for example, you can hear. So you can't say exactly where the big position is. Um, so we created a new score edition because we are also aware that uh, there are many score editions so we don't know uh, which one uh, did the performers use when they recorded uh, their um, performance. Uh, so we used these three score editions and uh, we took the uh, markings that uh, were in at least two of them. And using this Music 21 Python library, we uh, have this score edition that we created in XML, and we map uh, the positions uh, of the markings, dynamic markings, into the uh, audio using uh, the information that we got from this library. Because from this library, we can get the information of where the, <coughs> the, the dynamic marking is. Um, and then the other idea was to analyze the behavior of projected dynamics for each dynamic marking. That means that, for example, in one piece of music, you can have uh, four piano markings uh, in different locations. And we wanted to compare the values, the dynamic values that these um, performances um, were played in the same time. Uh, when this marking appeared. So we had four groups of piano, let's say. Uh, where in each uh, group, there were uh, these dynamic values from its performance. And we found that these groups were significantly different. And here we have some uh, examples. Uh, for example, in this Mazurka one, we have five piano, uh, piano dynamic markings. And the third one was significantly different from the others, it was softer. And one explanation was that the score sequence of the markings, uh, before this piano, there was a fortissimo, so probably the performers wanted to put some emphasis and they wanted to make it uh, bigger, the difference from fortissimo to piano. Other observation is that there are two uh, forte that were uh, significantly different from the other uh, forte of this mazurka, and one uh, explanation is that there was poco before them. And another observation, uh, there were eight forte markings, and the last one was louder than the others. Probably the uh, performers wanted to emphasize the ending of the piece. And we wanted also to explore how these uh, changes in dynamics can go through score time. So we say we had this uh, uh, dynamic landscapes, let's say, for um, these dynamic values when the uh, markings uh, were appeared. And we created clusters uh, of these dynamic curves uh, using the k-mean clustering method. And I have two uh, examples here. For example, in Mayazuka 2, there are these three clusters the black one is the most popular one, like the most, um, the, the performers that uh, they most use this pattern. And this is another and interesting part of it, uh, where there was a section of piano, piano, pianissimo, and then forte. And we can hear an example of performance. Yeah. 
particular clustering. But there were other performances that they didn't follow this. before that and on that time, and the values after this time are different. And for this uh, change point algorithm, they use their statistics having uh, this null hypothesis that the non-existence of a change point. Uh, we use the one change point algorithm uh, introduced in 2013 by Healy et al. Uh, it's called Print Exact Linear Time Change Point Algorithm. Uh, where it provides an exact solution of change point positions. It is based on a dynamic programming algorithm. The algorithm employs a planning step which makes its computational cost linear in the data. As the data set grows, the number of change points increases, meaning that the change points tend not to be aggregated. Um, this is uh, different from uh, other algorithms like the binary segmentation algorithm, which is more uh, popular uh, and known. Uh, because, uh, for example, in binary segmentation, you have uh, you detect a, uh, a change point, and then you split the, your data into two, and then you search for another change point from in the first part, and another change point in the second part, and so on. In this one now, you take every time the data as whole, and uh, taking also uh, the information of how many change points have you already detected. Um, but uh, the a good part of this algorithm is that it's fast and efficient. Uh, we're using two kind of parameters: the mean var, uh, the mean var function, where we took out the mean and the variance, the changes in mean and in variance. I essentially, the variance is uh, taking the uh, de the details on on the density of the data, so that we can have another change point here. So here we can see the area where it's one change point. Here there is one change point and we'll change the area of the data. Uh, we had uh, made an experiment. We used 45 performances of uh, this mazurka. Uh, we manually bit annotated all the uh, audio recordings and we evaluated this belt algorithm for multiple number of change points. Um, we used uh, an F measure, uh, which is um, maximizing the number of the dynamic markings that are captured 
by using the least uh, uh, number of change points. And one indicates that the old dynamic markets are near change points. Then we created two kinds of errors, uh, one corresponding uh, the change points and the other to um, corresponding the dynamic markings. And we also used uh, three, uh, four, uh, four window sizes for its dynamic marking so that we will capture a specific area of dynamic, uh, of dynamic values for this uh, specific marking. And we had this uh, results. What's important is that in the best perfect performance that we had was this one. Uh, it was a recording uh, by Jay Olson, and the maximum number of markings that we could capture was 13. Uh, the whole um, the number of the markings are 16 in this mazurka, uh, using 17 change points, and these are the uh, change points that indicate to the dynamic markings. So we could capture the dynamic markings. Um, having all this data now available, all these audios for the mazurkas, um, it takes so much time to manually notate or to find information about manual beta notations. This is why uh, we uh, detect manually the bit positions of a reference audio for each mazurka. What a reference audio means? Um, Essentially, the average in duration and average in tempo curves. And so we have this information of the bit positions, and we automatically align these uh, positions to the other um, to the other uh, recordings by using uh, the automatic alignment method by Ebert and Mueller. Um, and we found out it was promising because we found this uh, uh, result. The, we compare the manual annotations by us and the annotations from the automatic beta alignment method and we found that the actual difference was 0 0.042 seconds. But still, we have to make more statistics on that. Uh, another observation now that, you are with, that we are using the change points uh, from path algorithm uh, is to look again a dynamic uh, landscape of one mazurka we can uh, see that it's not clearly detected uh, what are the uh, dynamic values for each of the, uh, of the markings. For example, here there is a section for the piano, for the piano, but here it's not very clear. This is why we, uh, f we are focusing on how they are um, changing these uh, dynamic values individually. Because if we are looking through the whole of our data, it's not clear at all. Um, and another interesting part is that uh, the pianissimo is taking average, uh, um, a big average in the end. And also the dolce uh, indication is not clear. Another popular position that we found, that there was a change point but there was not a dynamic marking, was um, uh, were depending on the structure of the piece. For example, here in the in the starting of thing B in uh, one mazurka, in mazurka number six, that was two, there was a change point, but there is no dynamic marking. And also, there were also similarities in dynamic values of change points indicating different markings. For example, we couldn't find differences in piano and sort of both. Conclusion since the dynamic markings are limited to express the same dynamic value, no absolute indication. Some reasons for significant differences in dynamic values between instances of the same dynamic marking include the local sequential context for the dynamic marking, qualifiers of the marking, and the global context of the marking. These are the three our main focuses to model our uh, system. Thank you.